Busy night for you, huh? I mean, if I were defending my title against an opponent like me, I might be just a little more focused on my match. Don't worry. I'm more than capable of helping a friend out and beating you in the same night. Well, while you've been off auditioning for movies and getting in fights with your old high school bully, I've been training for our match. You see, it's become a bit personal for me. You might even say I feel disrespected by your attitude. It's like everything's easy for you, huh? You show up in WWE and just waltz your way to the top? Well, that makes me angry. Didn't you do the exact same thing? <laughs> not even close. You're right. It's not the same. Because I didn't have a famous dad to help me get here. I've earned everything I have. There it is again. Disrespect. And speaking of that, beating me is not even on your list as far as I can tell. I only put my goals on there, not things I expect to do. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, after tonight, you'll have a new goal to put on your list. Take back the Raw Women's Championship from Charlotte Flair. Hey, thanks for the assist out there. And by the way, now that I've officially got the part again, it's not too late for me to pull some strings and get you a roll. I think I'm cool with sitting this one out. All right. Well, the door's open if I'm back for rank and file five. Although I heard R-Truth pitch the producers on making it an office drama with him as a star, and it's under strong consideration, so we'll see. Oh, by the way, I left tickets for my real parents again. No luck, though. Still doing that, huh? Yep. And who knows? Maybe if they're not WWE fans, then they'll see me in the movie. Can't hurt. Yeah, I guess. Hey, before you go out for your match, you mind signing my script? <laughs> sure. May you always have a happy Thanksgiving. See? It is catching on. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. We've heard coming into this match that Charlotte has felt disrespected by Red, especially considering Red did not put beating Charlotte on her list. Well, the list has proven to be a great motivational tool for Red and Trey, but now we've seen its potential downside. It's provoked Red's opponent tonight, who's already imposing enough without extra motivation. It's kind of similar to bulletin board material in sports, when a player talks trash and provides some extra incentive for their opponent. What would you know about that? Anyway, some of those points are good, but the time for talk is over. Let's find out who can back it up. Ooh, well planted knee. Ouch. It looks like Charlotte is setting a very good pace. And here comes Charlotte. Great counter. Impressive in-ring IQ on display. Heavy duty right hand. She's got to remember to get back in the ring before the referee's 10 count. That is a great reversal. This one's about the women's championship, and nothing means more to these women than that title. It is not looking good for Charlotte. Oh, right to the face. That's how you stop your opponent. What an uppercut. Shoulders down. Championship on the line. One, two. Real close. Too close for comfort. Yeah, and Charlotte just refuses to concede anything. Powering through like the champion she is. Burner kick. The title's going nowhere. The champion into the cup. This is where we can see where Charlotte fell short of her legacy. Here is your winner and still the Raw Women's Champion, Reed. And she picks.
picks up the win. Man, this champion has a stranglehold on that title and doesn't appear to be letting up anytime soon. No surprise there. That was exactly what we expected when the match was announced for SummerSlam. What an incredible effort all around. Can you believe they're all the way up to rank and file seven now? No, I can't. I thought they would have stopped making them after your performance. Wow, didn't realize this was a roast. No, it's just that you definitely had some interesting priorities earlier in your career. First, it was the movie. Then you were obsessed with getting your own action figure. It was on the list since day one. Yeah, which made you super jealous when I got one before you did. Remember this? Are you still a little bit jealous? No. Are you sure? I think you're exaggerating how I reacted. <laughs> really? Because that's not how I remember it. Check it out! My first action figure! Pretty cool, right? Awesome. They really nailed the detail in your face. You didn't even really look at it. Yeah, well, you know what they say about action figures. Once you've seen one, you've seen them all. Literally no one says that. Wait, are you jealous because you don't have one yet? No, I'm fine. Okay, look, I get it. This was more your thing, but it's just an action figure. It's more than that to me. Think of how you felt when I won a title in WWE before you did. It's like that, but ten times worse. Comparing titles to action figures might be a little extreme. But if it makes you feel any better, I'll wait and let you cross it off our list whenever you get one. No, it's fine. Cross it off. You earned it. I see you got your first action figure. We've had like 30 now, so it's kind of boring at this point. Where's yours? I think he didn't get one. <laughs> well, that's awkward. I think even like Tom Phillips got one. He doesn't really deserve it. <laughs> well, that's true. He's lucky even to be on the roster. <clears throat> Sorry, we got sidetracked with a private conversation that had absolutely nothing to do with you. But since apparently you don't have an action figure, we like to give you ours. Happy Rusev Day! Do you think he heard what we said? Who cares? He's a loser. <laughs> I heard he jerks, and if I had an action figure of my own, I'd team up with Red's action figure to kick your action figure stupid plastic butts. Or even better, how about we take them down in real life? Huh? Oh, yeah. I guess we could do that. WWE superstars end up facing each other in the ring for a variety of reasons. Tonight, Red and Trey are squaring off with Rusev and Lana because of, well, action figures. But from what I hear, Trey was throwing a tantrum because he didn't get an action figure and then was apparently offended when Rusev and Lana tried to graciously give him theirs. Hey, I can relate to Trey. I mean, you guys have them, but when am I going to get my own action figure? Never. Never ever, because nobody wants that Saxton. Really just laying it in. Tandem in stereo. Remember that when we talk about Lana, this is a woman who studies the Israeli defense system known as Krav Maga. She speaks Russian and English fluently and has backgrounds in foreign affairs, business management, and marketing. So I don't think you'll be able to outthink the ravishing Russian. KO punch. That's it, Corey. Hook them up. And a suplex. Drop kick. Hits the mark. Great agility. Whoa. A lot of able to avoid damage. She's taking charge here. Dictating the pace of the match now. All right, that was a long way down. You're watching Monday Night Raw. 
Lana is an incredibly cunning individual. It's highly unlikely an adversary will be able to defeat the ravishing Russian when it comes to strategy. Lana takes every detail into consideration and thinks three or four steps ahead of her opponent. It's not wise for a superstar to attempt to out-strategize Lana. The Ravishing Russian's a relentless strategist and thinks of every possible scenario when plotting to take down her adversary. And there's the reversal from Rusev. Oh, man. Oh, what a combo. This tag team contest is underway. Both of these teams have been very gay. Boom. Cover here. One, two, wow. Part of me thought that was it, Cole. Not looking good, guys. Ah, oh, in tandem. In stereo. Simply said, this is going to be a great match. What should Lana try to do differently at this stage to stay in this thing? Oh my. She returns the favor there. Gets the tag. Dragon twist cutter. It's from one of the most prolific strikers in the game. Land of them. He thinks he has it. One, two. Interesting decision here, Corey. I don't know. I kind of like it. He clearly wants to inflict. Boom. That should do it right there. One, two, three. This next tag's all over. What a victory. And that's a huge win for this guy. I can't say that I'm all that surprised about the outcome. When it's your night, it's your night. And it'll be interesting to see the ripple effects this win has in the weeks to come. In all seriousness, even though it wasn't as important to me, it was pretty cool when not long after that, you got your first action figure and crossed it off our list. But the fact we had different priorities is partly what made this work, because let's be honest, if we've been competing for the same things, I'm not sure we could have been friends. You were just always so driven to be the best. Maybe, but it's not like I was only focused on individual goals. Like, what about when we went to SmackDown Live and I ended up teaming with someone who was a great influence and mentor to me? I'm talking about Mickey James, of course. Stand up and take a bow, Mickey. You deserve it. You fought hard, but it just wasn't your night. Let's face it. It hasn't been your night in a long time. Now, as general manager of SmackDown Live, it's my job to present a cutting-edge product, which means constantly introducing new talent to keep our brand fresh and exciting. But we can't add new talent without making subtractions. So I'm sorry, Mickey, but based on your recent performance, you can either announce your retirement or unfortunately, I'll have to make that decision for you. Wait, so you're basically forcing her out? She deserves better than that. I understand where you're coming from. But like I said, this is bigger than one person. It's about protecting the brand. There would be no brand without women like Mickey James. You know what? It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I've been doing this a long time, and maybe I've lost a step. Maybe it's just time to hang it up. No! You can't just accept this. There has to be another way. Well, there is one other option, but it would just be delaying the inevitable. Mickey can continue competing on SmackDown Live, as long as she wins. But the very next match she loses is her last. She'll do it. I will. All right. Good luck. Look, I appreciate the support, but with my record as of late, I don't think I'll be sticking around too long. Or maybe you will with me by your side. 
What do you mean? Big Show didn't say you had to win singles matches. Are you sure you want to set aside your own goals to do this? There's nothing I'd rather do than protect your legacy by sending you out on a winning streak. And one last title run. Win women's tag team championships with Mickey James. Welcome everyone to the most iconic talk show ever, Iconic Talk, with your hosts, the Iconics. We just said iconic so many times. You said it again. I think we just set a record. Speaking of records, I want to remind everyone that we are now the longest running women's tag team champions ever from Australia. They're also the only women's tag team champions from Australia. Which brings us to my favorite segment of Iconic Talk. It's time for Why, Why Australia, Australia is better. better. This is a part of the show where we educate our audience on different aspects of Australian culture and explain why Australia is better. Okay, what do we have this week? The great sport of cricket. Which has nothing to do with filthy little insects. No, it's actually a sport that is very popular in Australia. Think of it like a way better version of your horrible, dull baseball. To further educate you on this superior sport, Let's go over the laws of cricket, shall we? There are only 42 of them. Shouldn't take long. Law 1. A cricket team consists of 11 players, including a captain. That's a great law. One of my favourites. Now, Law 2. Hey, what are these two doing out here? There were still 41 laws to go. I wanted to learn more about cricket. I think you were the only one. Law 2. The Iconics should never be allowed to have a talk show as it'll put everyone watching to sleep. That's not an actual law. Yeah, don't listen to her. Why are you two even out here? It's very rude to interrupt someone's talk show. I recommend you go back and watch this segment we did on manners. We're here because we want a tag team championship match. So, you two are a team now. <laughs> what are you calling yourselves? Red and grey? <laughs> because Mickey's so old, get it? Hilarious, she really is a fossil. You've never even teamed before, so what makes you think you deserve a shot at our titles? Maybe because eight years ago in Calgary, I beat you in my very first match, and I've only gotten better since then. Way better. Oh, okay, so you're saying since a long time ago, I felt bad for my pathetic opponent and basically took the night off because I was freezing, that a decade later, when that pathetic opponent rears her ugly head with an elderly partner, they deserve a tag title opportunity? Makes sense. That was sarcasm. The answer is no. <laughs> if you think that we need to prove ourselves as a team, then we'll do it right now in a non-title match. If we win, we get a championship match. And if you win, you end my career. That whole career-ending stipulation is enticing. Yeah, I forgot about that. It would be nice to put her out to pasture. We'll do it. But only after we finish teaching everyone about cricket. Law 3. Never interrupt the Iconics. The Iconics viciously attack Red and Mickey with those cricket bats. And rightfully so, they violated Law 3. Red and Mickey are going to be at a severe disadvantage going into this match with so much at stake. If you're just joining us, this is a nine title match with the stipulation that if Red and Mickey can defeat the Iconics, they earn a shot at their tag team titles. However, 
If the Iconics win, Mickey James' career will be over. And Red and Mickey are clearly not 100% after that brutal attack by the Iconics. Look, no one wants to see a pioneer like Mickey James have her career come to an end, but it's going to happen sooner or later, and I have a feeling it'll be sooner, as in tonight at the hands of the Tag Team Champions. She's starting to look concerned. She's putting up quite a fight here, Cole, but despite that, now is probably a good time to look for the tag. Ah! Striking combination! Bulldog! Lost in the corner right now. Here's a tag. Opponent off the ropes. Assault on the lower back. Big elbow. I hear an audible groan from the crowd. I haven't noticed, but I'm sure they're just jealous, Cole. The fact of the matter is, when you look and perform like Peyton Royce does, you should absolutely have a high opinion of yourself. Absolutely has to make a tag here. Yeah, but that's easier said than done, Michael. Missed the tag. Impressive strike combination. Oh my gosh. What an uppercut. Holy cow. What a... This might be it. James gets it done to pick up the win. When you bring such a high level of intensity to the match, good things are bound to happen to you. And folks, if you just joining us, I'm sorry to tell you that you just missed one of the most exciting SmackDown matches in recent memory. That was awesome! And considering our lack of experience together, I'd say we make a pretty good team. I agree. <laughs> I mean... You know what? I just want to say thank you for doing this. I could be sitting at home right now, but instead we have a chance to win the tag team championships. And even if my career does end, this is a heck of a way to go out. Before you celebrate too much, we just found out your tag title match will be taking place on our home turf. That's right, in our great country, in front of our fans at Super Showdown. It doesn't matter. We'll beat you anywhere. Oh, you should also know it's going to be an Australian Rules tag match, which are the most iconic rules. What does that even mean? It means it'll be no disqualification, tornado tag. Or willy willy tag, as we say down under. Hey Mickey, you should pack an extra week of clothes, you know. So you can go on holiday in Australia after we end your career? We'll call our grandparents and see if they know of any good senior resorts. <laughs> <laughs> You have to believe the Iconics have a major advantage here tonight at Super Showdown, competing in front of their home country fans in an Australian Rules Tag Team Championship match. And don't forget, Red and Mickey have the added pressure of Mickey's career being on the line. If they lose, this chapter of Mickey's life is a fish cover by the challenger. Drop suplex. Not sure what made her think now is a good time for a pin attempt. Red goes for the Irish whip, but gets sent into the corner instead. And now here come the Iconics, pouring it on in front of their home crowd. This does not look good for Red and Mickey, and by extension, Mickey's career. What are the Iconics doing? Oh, I think it's time for a game of cricket. Red and Mickey have other plans. This is a bit of revenge for what took place before their match on SmackDown Live. And since Australian rules is no disqualification, it's perfectly legal. Oh, oh my 
God, what an elbow. Peyton Royce was able to get out of the way there. Roundhouse kick. Again with it. She's showing no mercy tonight. Boom, what a kick. Boom. <laughs> Why would you... Boom. Moving into the cover of the title of the line. New champion. New champion. Not only has Red Help Mickey James ward off retirement, they're now the new women's tag team champions. To win this match under the pressure they faced and do it in enemy territory under the Iconics rules is truly impressive. Honestly, I think a lot of credit goes to Red and her list. Someone said it before the match, that list is a powerful motivational tool for Red. Yeah, that someone was me, Corey. Nah, it couldn't have been you, it probably was Cole. And that's how Mickey James went from being a hero and mentor of mine to more than that. She was now my tag team partner and more importantly, my friend. Oh, that's nice. But aren't you skipping over a pretty important part? How about we move on? Don't you want to talk about when you were on the cover of WWE 2K25? I do. But hang on a second. Earlier you put me on blast for having some trivial goals. So now it's my turn to call you out for a time when you let the list steer you down a questionable path. This is a night to remember our careers, good and bad. Fine. If you want to talk about it so much, then you tell the story. Okay. After they became tag team champions, it turned everything around for Mickey. She even ended up earning a SmackDown Live Women's Championship opportunity against Kyrie Sane. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. Somehow, Mickey continues to defy the odds. It's like every time she's back into a corner, she somehow finds a new way to escape. Congratulations, Mickey. You earned every bit of this. I feel like you've been a little off lately. You're moody, quick to lash out, overly judgmental about my decisions. It all sounds like typical me. Maybe those weren't the best examples, but I've known you long enough to realize when something's bothering you. Well, to be honest, I'm kind of getting impatient. I mean, teaming with Mickey has been fun, but I never thought it would last this long, and I definitely didn't see her singles title run happening. Now I'm basically waiting for someone to beat her so I can go after the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. I've been dying to cross that off. Some might say you're a bit too focused on the list. Who's some? Are you some? Look, if you want my advice, I see two ways for you to get what you want. But the first option wouldn't be very honorable. What do you mean? If you and Mickey were to somehow lose your tag titles, then Mickey would be forced to retire and vacate her women's title, leaving you free to pursue it. Option number two, the more straight up way of doing things, would be for you to tell Mickey exactly how you feel and challenge her to a match for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship, potentially crossing that off the list. But if you beat her, you'd also lose the tag titles and worse, end the career of your idol slash friend. I don't really love either option. This business forces you to make some tough decisions. But at least you're not choosing between competing in a tag title match or saving your mangled ear like Mick Foley once had to do. No, but if losing my ear was option three, I'd think I'd take it. The alternative is just waiting around for something to happen, and who knows how long that could take. You're right. I guess I should... Hey, Mickey. I need to talk to you about something. It's kind of personal, sorry. We'll catch up later. What's going on? Is everything okay? Yeah, well, not really. It's just lately... Uh, I'll just come out and say it. I want your title, and I know what that means for you and for us, but I don't think I can sit back any longer. You know what? I was waiting for this moment. You were? Look, I, I know who you are, what you're made of, what got you here. You're driven to be the very best. 
and I knew that being tag team champions would only satisfy you for so long. So you don't hate me? No, I get it. I actually respect you for your honesty. I can think of a couple other ways this could have gone down. But if I beat you, it's all over. If it's going to come to an end, and it will, sooner rather than later, I want you to be the one that does it. Besides, none of this would have even happened if it wasn't for you. But with all that said, I've come too far to just roll over. If you face me for my title, you better be ready for a fight. <laughs> you know me. I wouldn't want it any other way. Months ago, Red essentially resuscitated her idol Mickey James career. Tonight, after issuing her an open and honest challenge, she may now cause it to come to a sudden conclusion. Let me ask me, Red's being extremely selfish. She's prioritizing the list and her individual goals ahead of her tag team championship and her supposed friend's career. Uh, you may feel that way, but from all accounts, Mickey James was completely fine with how Red approached her regarding this match. She even said if she was going to lose her title and her career, she'd want it to be to Red. Well, I for one will never understand that. Oh, 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 turn out the lights. The champ trying to roll with the... Mickey James appears to be on her last legs. I'm sorry. Red hits the mid kick. Is this the end for Mickey James? It's all over. Red is your new SmackDown Live Women's Champion. And as a result, Mickey James' historic career has come to an end. Red ended Mickey's career with her own move. What a true friend. I think it was actually a sign of respect to do it that way. Yeah, it was almost like a tribute. You know, it would have been a good tribute, continuing to defend the tag championship and not ending your idol's career. You deserve this moment. A nice gesture from our new champion, Red, giving Mickey James a chance to say goodbye to the WWE Universe. And no matter how I feel about Red right now, I do want to say thank you to Mickey James. You will be missed. Thank you, Mickey.